Hello everyone, this is Josephus the Scholar, and welcome to my channel. This is a video that has been suggested by one of my subscribers, the Storm Dragon. I'll be placing a link to his channel down below, and I recommend watching his gameplay videos. He's a nice guy, and I'd like to help him out with his channel. Anyway, this video is going to be over the history of Hell. More specifically, how the idea of Hell changes from different religions and cultures. Hell is a realm of the afterlife that is a place of punishment for the damned, or those who are guilty of sins or evil deeds. While Hell is strongly associated with Christian theology, Christianity isn't the only religion that states that Hell exists. Here is a brief synopsis of the different views of Hell from around the world. Hell in the Various Religions It is interesting to note that in the Old Testament, the afterlife is rarely discussed. In early Judaism, Hell didn't exist. Regarding the afterlife, the Israelites believed in Shoal. Shoal, which means the grave in Hebrew, is a place of darkness that is under the earth in which all people, regardless if they were good or evil, go to after death. The people in Shoal, who are called Shades, are cut off from God and are unable to communicate to the living unless they are not given a proper burial, were victims of an unavenged murder, or are summoned via necromancy. A more concrete concept of the afterlife entered Judaism after the Jews had contact with the Persians. After the conquest of Babylon by King Cyrus the Great in 539 BC, the Jews were permitted to return to their homeland. During this period, the Jewish religion developed into the religion that is now practiced today with synagogues taking the place of the temple and the study of the Torah being a focal point of religious services. It is also during this period when the concept of heaven and hell were introduced due to the Jewish people having contact with Zoroastrianism, the official religion of the Persian Empire, and its core concept of good versus evil. Many Jews are torn on the conflicting views of the afterlife. Some Jews don't believe in an afterlife due to it not being a major concept in the Old Testament, while other Jews believe in either Shoal or heaven and hell. In the New Testament, there are three words used that are commonly translated in modern copies of the Bible as hell. The first word is Gehenna. This is the term used by Jesus. Gehenna is a term that refers to the Valley of Hemon, a valley south of Jerusalem that was used as a garbage dump. When the valley got too full, the trash would be burned to make more room. It is interesting that Jesus uses the metaphor of a garbage dump where trash is burned to describe the realm of the damned. The other two words used in the New Testament are Hades and Tartarus. Hades is the realm of the dead in Greek mythology, and Tartarus is the part of Hades where the damned are tortured. Because the New Testament was written in Greek, the term Hades was used in place of the term Shoal, and refers simply to the realm of the dead and not a place of torment. Tartarus, on the other hand, is referring to hell directly, and may have been used because the audience of the New Testament would have been familiar with Hellenistic culture. The views of Christian hell vary from denomination to denomination, one of them being the debate on whether or not children go to hell. Yeah, children and hell. Roman Catholicism teaches that the souls of unbaptized children and virtuous pagans go to a location in hell called Limbo, while many Protestants, like Baptists, believe that the souls of unbaptized children don't go to hell because they didn't reach the age of understanding. Another issue regarding Christian hell is the fate of those who commit suicide. While the Bible does not condemn suicide as a sin, nor states that those who commit suicide go to hell, many Christians believe that those who commit suicide go to hell, due to it being seen as self-murder and as a rejection of God's gift of life. Just like the other Abrahamic religions, Islam also teaches that hell awaits those who commit evil deeds. The Islamic version of hell, known as Jahannam, is described in full detail in the Quran and the Hadith a collection of sayings attributed to Muhammad. Hell is described as a place of fire and brimstone, where the damned are linked together in chains and their flesh is burnt to the bone. The gates of hell are guarded by an angel named Malek, and there is a tree in hell called Zakom that provides food for the damned. Several people that are said to be suffering in hell include the Pharaoh of the Exodus, the wives of the prophet Noah and Lot, and Abu Lahab, the uncle of Muhammad and one of his enemies. While the Quran states that polytheists and idolaters go to hell, the Quran also states that the people of the book, aka the Jews and the Christians, do go to heaven because they already accepted God's previous revelations via the Jewish prophets and Jesus. 
There is also debate amongst Muslims and Islamic scholars whether hell is a place of eternal damnation or as a place where punishment is temporary. While most people are aware that Hindus and Buddhists believe in reincarnation, most aren't familiar with their views on hell. That's correct, there is a version of hell in the Dharmaic religions. In Hinduism, the souls of sinners are condemned to an underground realm of torture known as Naraka. Naraka is the home of Yama, the Hindu god of death, who serves as both the judge of the dead and as a grim reaper who goes to the dying to collect their souls. Once the damned are taken to the court of Yama and judged, they are then sentenced to one of the 28 levels of Naraka for the punishment of a specific sin. However, unlike the hell of the Abrahamic religions, the damned and Naraka are not stuck there for eternity and are allowed to leave via reincarnation after a set amount of time. In Buddhism, there are six realms of existence in the universe. These realms are the God Realm, the Demon Realm, the Human Realm, the Animal Realm, the Hungry Ghost Realm, and the Hell Realm. The last three realms are the hellish levels of the Buddhist afterlife. In the Animal Realm, those who have too much negative karma to be reincarnated as humans are reborn as animals. In the Hungry Ghost Realm, those who are greedy and selfish in life live as restless spirits who keep eating but never get full. The Hell Realm is the place where the worst sinners are tormented, and punishments include being burnt, being frozen, being beaten, and being eaten alive. Once the negative karma is wasted, the soul can leave by being reborn into another realm. Hell in the Ancient World The Mesopotamian civilizations, the Sumerians, the Akkadians, the Assyrians, and the Babylonians, shared the same dark and rather depressing view of the underworld. The Sumerians referred to the realm of the dead as Kura, while the Babylonians called it Ikala. Regardless of the name, all Mesopotamians viewed the underworld as a ghostly version of life on Earth, and as a place where no one can return once they enter. The underworld was ruled by a group of deities who had power over the dead. These deities include Arishnagal, the queen of the dead and the most feared deity in the Mesopotamian pantheon, and Nergal, the god of death and war and the husband of Arishnagal. Like Shoal in the Old Testament, the Mesopotamian underworld is not a place of torment, but the final resting place of all people, regardless if they were good or evil. The dead are doomed to live alone in the darkness as ghosts, and require offerings from the living to keep them at rest. The ancient Egyptians are well known for their obsession with death and the afterlife. After death, the soul of the deceased had to undergo a journey through the underworld, called Duwat, to reach the afterlife. While in Duwat, the deceased would face various obstacles on his or her journey, such as lakes of fire, walls of iron, and various demons. After facing these obstacles, the deceased would be judged by Osiris, the god of the afterlife, by having his or her heart weighed on a scale. If the person lived a virtuous life, aka a heart free of sin, he or she would be allowed to enter the field of reeds, the Egyptian equivalent of heaven. While Dawat was, at times, a horrifying place, it wasn't a place of punishment for the damned. In fact, the Egyptians did not have a hell like the Abrahamic religions. Remember when I said the heart of the deceased would be weighed on a scale? Well, if the deceased's heart was heavy with evil deeds, his or her heart would be devoured by Amut, a female demon with the head of a crocodile, the upper body of a lion, and the lower body of a hippo. After the heart, which was also the soul, was devoured by Amut, the deceased would cease to exist. To the Egyptians, not existing was a fate worse than anyone could face in any form of hell. The ancient Greeks and Romans shared the same views of the afterlife, mostly because Roman mythology is basically a ripoff of Greek mythology. In Greco-Roman mythology, the dead go to an underworld known as Hades. Hades is also the name of the Greek god of death and the ruler of the land of the dead. Hades is also known as Pluto by the Romans. The Greco-Roman underworld is divided into three realms. The Ashpothdal Fields is a dark, shadowy land that will be the final resting place for most of humanity. It is like the Roman Catholic concept of purgatory. Elysium is the Greco-Roman equivalent of heaven. Described as either being a group of islands or a single island, Elysium is a place of eternal joy and partying. However, only heroes and demigods are allowed there. Tartarus is the Greco-Roman equivalent of hell. I have previously stated that the term Tartarus was used 
as one of the three terms of hell used in the New Testament. This is because the authors of the New Testament were writing to an audience that was familiar with Greco-Roman culture. Tartarus is the place where the worst of humanity are punished for eternity due to the crimes they committed against the gods or humanity. People that can be found in Tartarus, according to several Greek myths, include Tantalus, who was condemned to suffer starvation despite having food within reach, and Sisyphus, who was condemned to push a boulder up a mountain that would roll back down to the bottom after nearly reaching the top. The Mesoamerican civilizations, specifically the Maya and the Aztec, had similar views of the afterlife, the underworld, known as Mictalan by the Aztecs, and Xibalba by the Maya, was believed to be a place of darkness and fear that served as the final resting place for most people. The Aztec and the Maya believed that the more one suffered in life, the better his or her afterlife would be. Thus, the Mesoamerican equivalent of heaven was only accessible to four groups of people. Warriors who died in battle, women who died during childbirth, people who committed suicide, and victims of human sacrifice. Mictoplan and Shibalba, on the other hand, would be the domain of those who died of natural causes or old age. Like the Jewish Shoal or the Mesopotamian underworld, Mictoplan was not a place of torment. But like the Wat in Egyptian mythology, Shibalba is full of dangerous locations, such as the House of Gloom, the House of Cold, the House of Jaguars, the House of Fire, the House of Bats, and the House of Knives. Hell and Popular Culture Hell is a common setting for many films. Example of many movies that have hell as a setting, or a part of the plot, include Drag Me to Hell, Little Nicky, As Above, So Below, and Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. While some of these are horror movies, Little Nicky is a comedy in which the son of the devil goes to Earth to capture his two brothers and stop them from causing literal hell on Earth. It is a great movie, and I highly recommend it. Many television shows have also used hell as a setting for a few episodes, or the entire series. In the popular television show, Lucifer, the devil himself retires from his position as the ruler of hell and opens a bar called Lux in Los Angeles, California. In this series, hell is depicted as a series of prison cells that each contain a specifically crafted hell, personally suited to each sinner. Lucifer also stated some interesting facts about hell, such as the first person to be sentenced to hell was the biblical character Abel, and that it's not God or the devil that sends people to hell, but it's their own guilt. Hell also plays a role in many cartoons. Examples of old-timey cartoons set in the Land of the Damned include the Flesher Brothers' Swing You Sinners, Disney's Hell's Bells, and the Looney Tunes' Satan's Waitin' and Devil's Feud Cake. Examples of more recent cartoons that follow this devilish tradition include a few of the Treehouse of Horror episodes in The Simpsons and the animated sitcom God, the Devil, and Bob. If you want to experience the horrors of hell without having to die and go there, you could always try to play some of these video games. In the gaming phenomenon that is Minecraft, you can create a portal that transports you to the nether, a hell-like dimension full of darkness, lava, zombie pigs, and the endermen. In the cult classic Doom, you are a marine who fights demons who have escaped hell via gates on the moons of Mars. My personal favorite game with hell as its setting is Dante's Inferno, but I'll discuss that version of hell in the upcoming category. When most people think of hell, they generally think about hell being divided into various locations depending on what sin or crime one has committed, and that there are a wide variety of torture and suffering waiting for the damned. This isn't the hell that is described in the Bible, but in the works of Dante. Dante Alighieri was an Italian poet who lived during the 14th century. In The Divine Comedy, Dante goes on an imaginary journey through hell, purgatory, and heaven to be reunited with his beloved Beatrice. In the first book of this trilogy, Inferno, Dante goes through Hell. In Inferno, Dante states that Hell is divided into nine levels. The first level is Limbo. It is a green plain with a castle containing seven gates and is illuminated by light from heaven. This level is home to the unbaptized and virtuous non-Christians. Some of the sinners in Limbo include the ancient Greek philosophers Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, the Roman poets Virgil, Horace, Ovid, and Lucan, and the Muslim leader Saladin. The second level is the home of sinners, guilty of the sin of lust. Here the sinners are bound to their lovers and blown through harsh winds. Some of the sinners here include Queen Cleopatra of Egypt and Queen Semiramis of Assyria. The third level is the home of sinners guilty of the sin of gluttony. Here sinners are placed face down in mud while icy rain falls upon them. 
They are guarded by Cerberus, the three-headed guard dog of Hades. The fourth level is the home of sinners guilty of the sin of greed, and they are forced to push large sacks of gold around in a circle while being guarded by Plutus, the Roman god of wealth. The fifth level is the home of sinners guilty of the sin of anger. These sinners are placed in a marshy area of the river Styx and must fight other sinners to get access to the surface. The sixth level is the home of sinners guilty of heresy. Here, people who were heretics, atheists, and Epicureans are placed in iron crypts that are consumed by flames. Some of the sinners here include Emperor Frederick II of the Holy Roman Empire and Pope Anastasius II. The seventh level is home to sinners who committed various acts of violence. This level is divided into three sublevels: those who commit violence against others, aka murderers and tyrants, those who commit violence against themselves, aka suicide victims, and those who commit violence against God, nature, and the arts. The last sublevel includes people like blasphemers, homosexuals, and those who charge extra money on loans. The eighth level of hell is the home of sinners who committed various forms of fraud. This level is divided into ten sub-levels based on the type of fraud committed, such as flattery, being a false prophet, being a corrupt politician, hypocrisy, and theft. Dante meets a wide variety of sinners in this level, such as an ancient Greek prostitute named Thais, Caiaphas, the Jewish high priest who had Jesus crucified, Muhammad, the founder of the Islamic faith, and Mithraya, an ancient Greek princess who disguised herself to trick her father into having sex with her. The last level of hell is the home of sinners who committed treachery. This level is divided into four sublevels: Those who betray their family, those who betray their country, those who betray their friends and guests, and those who betray their lords and benefactors. These sinners are frozen in ice, and Satan is located at the main bottom. I hope you all, especially my good friend the Storm Dragon, enjoyed this video. I'll be posting links in the description below to all the cited sources used in my video along with some links to my videos that I have made related to the topics I've discussed. I hope to see you all again. God bless you, and keep learning.